So now that I have my rocket flying around, um, it, it'll require a lot of balancing. There's some things that I don't like about the way that it moves, but I can adjust um, the drag and the mass and, and the amount of force that's being applied to really kind of fine tune this rocket. But one of the things that I do want to iron out is I want the capability for when the rocket tips, when I, when I am no longer providing any input on the rotation, I want the rocket to correct itself and kind of move back towards the upright position. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to modify my rocket rotation to make it a little bit more complex. Um, and, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a state and I'm going to set this new state as the start state. Okay. Now, um, the, this start state, I'm going to call this idle, as I like to do with most of my um, states that aren't receiving any input. And on this state, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a... Um, an iTween action. So there's a, there's a category uh, uh, called iTween inside Playmaker. Uh, and this is um, an interesting way to animate components. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an iTween rotate 2. And I'll just double click. And I think right out of the box without too much trouble, um, I'm going to go find the iTween rotation and I want to pay special attention to the vector rotation. And I'll just flip that on and, and uh, I want to rotate back towards zero, zero, zero. And if we look at our rocket, look at our inspector, it's currently, its rotation is at zero, zero, zero. So what this iTween rotation is going to try to do is it's going to going to rotate the rocket back to its default state uh, over time. I'm not going to modify any send events here, but this is just a, a slightly more complex rotation. Uh, it's going to rotate it back towards a direction. We have an amount of time it's going to take to rotate. Um, now what we want to do is, because we need to pass this back and forth between the idle state and the rotate state, um, so I'm going to call this the, the, the uh, rocket rotation state, and then there's the idle um, I could call this the straighten um, uh, or idle reset state, you know, to reset the rotation, whatever we want to call these states. Um, I need to be able to pass this back and forth. Now, based on the user input of the rotation, I know that I'm mainly dealing with the A and D keys. And so what I'm going to do is in the idle state, I'm going to listen for either the A or the D key down. And so I can go find the input and I'm listening for a get key down. And the key that I'm listening for is I'll listen for both the A and the D keys. So I'll listen for A. Um, when I find that key, I want to fire off an event. And uh, I'll just call this go to rotate. And I'll also create an event that's called reset. And when I find the, when I press the A key, I want to fire off this uh, go to rotate. So I'll add that as a transition and wire that over to the rocket rotation. I want to do the same thing for the D key and rather than picking all this stuff out of the, the menu, I'll just simply do a copy selected action and I'll paste actions and I'll just change this A to D. So whether we press A or D, we're still firing off the rocket rotation. Now remember the rotation, we're getting an axis. We did that in the previous presentation. We're getting the axis and then we're applying the rotation. So while we're pressing the A or the D key, we will end up in the rocket rotation state. What I want to do here is I want to listen for a get key up. And I'm going to listen for the up key of both A and D, same keys that we use, just kind of the opposite call. Uh, and I'll send the event of reset back to the idle state. Okay, so I'm listening for A. I'll use that trick of copying, copy selected actions, and I'll do a quick paste, and we'll change this to D. So the result is we should be able to um, we should be able to thrust, and now when I press the D key and rotate, uh, it rotates to the right, but when we let off of it, the rocket stands back up. Okay, so I still have this glitch where if I, if I pick up a lot of speed and then, and then release, I don't like the, the response of how quickly this happens, so I'll probably slow down that rotation. Um, but at least I have something now to where I can, I can uh, start, start to kind of play with different results here. So. I'm going to take some time and balance this outside of the presentation, but, but now I have the basic mechanics that I need. 
Uh, before I wrap up this presentation, I do want to correct for a few things. The first thing is I want to turn the state labels off in my game view. So right now I'm seeing idle and idle reset. Uh, and I really, I'm really not so concerned about those uh, state labels. And so I'm going to go into the preferences of Playmaker. And I'm going to make sure that I have turn uh, show state labels in game view. I'm going to turn that off. So I'll no longer look at those state labels. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is um, I want to come up with a solution to where um, uh, the camera follows uh, the camera follows the player. Okay, so right now I can fly off screen, and that's not something that I want to do. And um, in fact, I just lost my rocket. Let me toggle the play button and turn that back on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to demonstrate this whole process. I'll, I'll build this off screen, but basically what I want to do is I'll probably build this on the camera object itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a state machine. And on the state machine, I'm going to go into the transform component. I believe it's in transform. And what I want to do is I want to get the, the position of an object. And I'm going to get the position not of the owner. I know where the camera is. What I want to do is I want to get the position of a specific game object. And I want to get the player position. I'm going to store the X and the Y position coordinates of the rocket. I'm going to store those uh, into variables that I make. And then in turn, I'm going to set position. I'm going to set the position of the camera, the owner of this object, to those X and Y variables. The result is that we'll have the camera follow the X and Y coordinate uh, of the player. Now, I'll, I'm not going to demonstrate that on, on the on the recording, I'll let you set that up. It's a very straightforward process of creating two variables and getting the position, the, the X position float of the, the player or the rocket in this case, and storing the X and the Y variables, and then setting the position of, of X and Y for the camera, the owner of this object. And we wanna do that every frame in both cases. So experiment with that. Um, try to build a simple uh, uh, camera that follows the player uh, in the next presentation, we'll talk about the goal. So creating the, the allowing the rocket to land uh, in its destination and detecting whether we successfully landed in the right location. We'll also try to introduce some kind of basic hazards uh, that once we launch and we fly, we do want to make a game out of this. So we want to be able to fly through the air, maybe avoid some obstacles, or maybe we'll manage a, a, a fuel value that we could run out of fuel if we don't land quick enough. Uh, once we arrive at our goal, uh, we'll have the reveal of the basic message. In this case, I'm going to announce uh, we're moving. So uh, the idea is that the rocket lands, and once it lands at its destination, maybe uh, um, some letters fall out of the sky that say we've moved. Kind of uh, short and sweet, very simple. That'll be the goal, and I'll uh, press forward to work towards that conclusion in the next presentation.